So, as promised to, well, I guess some people, um, I want to share my first sanguine experience. Um, my first, and this was, this was within the last three months. Not going to tell you who or exactly when, but it's my first sanguine experience. So, sanguine experience, what that basically means is that we drink each other's blood. Um, I would not recommend it, and I'm not encouraging anybody to do it by any means, but I will share my experience. Now I've, I've always kind of known that I could do psychic vampire things very easily. And I've talked about psychic vampirism in other videos. You can type in Hunter Cells or psychic van vampirism on YouTube and find the ones where I talked about psychic vampirism. It's not really my thing. Um, I don't really like feeding on people. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I, I can't. I do. I do it very effectively. But even psychic vampirism, just just with energy, anybody near me, I can do it. Or even the best form is just energy in an area, just soaking it in. I'm good at that as well. Or being very vindictive and you know, energy tendrils, visualization, going into the top back of my neck to the back of somebody else's neck, and as long as they're near, they're nearby, I can do that. I just, I just don't. It's, I don't actually want to, um, I don't actually want to just go around stealing people's energy. Um, I'm kind of a believer in karma, so, <laughs> uh, I feel like if I steal somebody else's energy, it's probably going to be stolen from me. Um, but I'm very good at psychic vampirism, if I want to be. And I had to be pretty pissed off in order to do it in a really fucked up way, where I see somebody physically start to wilt or the, the energy is just sapped from them. I'd be pretty pissed. <clears throat> but sanguine. You're drinking blood. It's see, th this is the kind of vampirism that is like mutual and it's you know, if you and a partner are willing and you drink each other's blood from wherever, um, you know, it's easier if here on you and then the other side on the other person, because you can both do it at once. But once again, would not recommend it, and I would encourage it. But um, my first sanguine experience, this experience, was within the last three months. Like I said, it was with a female, um, and it was it was interesting because you know, sanguine, by the way, is often used to refer to blood. Um, it's kind of like one of those, you know words that without actually saying blood you're saying blood um it was almost like as we were kind of drinking from each other it was almost like i felt like i was a part of a circle like i was a part of a, a two-part unit maybe not even two it, it it just felt so much like a circle that we were just like one thing and blood has a lot of iron in it but her blood tasted very sweet. And keep in mind, I've been a vegetarian for 10 years. And two of those were vegan. You know, then I got off being vegan. Then I went back to dairy and gained 30 pounds. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. But, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, there's, there's a variety of reasons that I don't eat meat. Um, some of them karmic and soul related. Um, and caring about other things related. So, you know, it might sound very strange for me, somebody who is vegetarian, to be having a sanguine experience. But uh, I did indeed, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It, it felt like we were one unit. It felt like we were a circle. Oberos. Is it Oberos or Oberos? I always forget. Snake eating its tail. I always forget the term. Um, it felt like we were one unit. Her blood tasted very sweet. And um, I felt stronger that day and the next day. I felt more, I guess you could say, fierce. Um, even though I wasn't mad or pumped up about anything, I just felt this, this like vibration throughout my body and my blood itself. Uh, like this exchange fueled me in a way that I've never been fueled before. 
um, and it it didn't even feel like I was so much drinking blood as much as being a part of a grander communication that I didn't really understand. <laughs> I suppose I suppose it sounds like love making in a way when you actually like somebody, which I suppose it can be. Um, man it is, I suppose, but it, uh, so blood itself, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of nutritional value. It shouldn't make you feel, you know, as far as, you know, taking it, it shouldn't make you feel that different. But the energy, the prana in blood, especially when you have, of course, a willing donor. If you go around drinking people without their permission, that's the worst kind of person you could be. But um, if you, you know, you and another person have an understanding and you drink from each other, however you do it. Sometimes you might not even lock lips on a person. Perhaps they might put it in a spoonful, they might put it into a spoon or something like that. Um we had more body contact, but that's another way to do it. And for some reason, I've always been drawn to blood. I'm a blood magician. Um, I work with blood quite a bit. And also, if you're going to drink blood from another person, understand that there's things that can be transferred as far as disease-wise as when it comes to blood. So if you're going to do it, which I wouldn't recommend, and I'm not endorsing it, if you're going to do it... Um, be pretty damn confident this person doesn't have some kind of SED or kind of disease that you could get through the blood. But how did it feel? It, like I said, it felt like we were one unit. Her blood tasted sweet. And it felt like time slowed down. Like it was an experience beyond time. Like it, it felt like a moment that just stood still. And... It was it was a oneness that is very specific to this kind of exchange. It was a remarkable oneness. It was uh, heightened. Um, you know, I had heightened senses. Um, all my senses became heightened. It felt like my soul, or well, more likely my spirit, being fed um, in a way that I have not felt before. Um, it was sensual, but it doesn't have to be sensual. I don't think. Um, kind of new to the whole sanguine thing. Um, but it was, it, it was a really, it was a very deep comfort. But it was a comfort that I've not quite felt before. And... It's, you know, vegetarian, tasting something like blood for it to be sweet and for it to, um, for it to be a, a really deep comfort might sound strange, but it didn't, it was, it was strange in its comfort, but it wasn't, this experience wasn't strange. It was just something that I never felt before. And it... It felt like I'd have to do this to reach that same kind of feeling that this provided. The same kind of nourishment. And I'm somebody who drinks a good amount and smokes well, a little bit more than I used to, but um, cigarettes. Um, but it felt like this kind of feeding it, it felt like it's all I really needed. And I've been just kind of like dulling my senses and trying to treat my need with all, you know, alcohol or cigarettes. But this felt like a complete kind of fill, filling instead of a numbing of my senses. It was a good experience. Um, once again, I'm not endorsing that you drink anybody's blood. It's a very dangerous thing. Um, there's a lot of people who might get locked in a connection 
to a person by doing this. But I've known enough people who practice the sanguine art that while there is some connection, you're not going to be irrevocably bound to this person. Um, you might be, maybe, in some circumstances. Um, I like the person um, that I did this with very much. But do I feel like there's some unbreakable bond? In a way, <clears throat> in a way I'd like there to be. But I don't think that this is what formed the bond. I just like the person. I don't feel like this is what formed the bond. Though it was very bonding. If that makes sense. Emotionally, spiritually. Um, just, uh, you kind of have to know what kind of person you are. And what you need. Because usually something like this would be a bad idea for a number of reasons. Magical and spiritual in nature as well as physical. So if you're ever going to do something like this, approach it with caution. Do not be reckless. Now this circumstance I'm talking about, me and her, it wasn't, it didn't feel reckless. It felt like it was kind of meant to be. But if you're going to do it, do not throw caution to the wind. And once again, I'm not endorsing that you do it. It's, uh, there's a lot of things that human language can't describe. And I feel like this is one of them. I've tried to give you hints. I've tried to explain myself, but it feels like there's an element of experience just missing from my explanation. And it's something that I can't quite verbalize. But you know, that's okay. A lot of experiences are like that. Um, it's not always easy to explain something we either just experienced or something that hits you so deep that words don't seem to be, you know, um, up to par to explaining it. But at any rate, those are some details from my first sanguine experience. I hope this was interesting. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, shoot them down in the comment section below on YouTube. Um, if you enjoyed this content and other content that I put out, please put a like down there. Um, likes help the channel out a lot, helps traffic. Um, if you just kind of want to be notified every time I post a video, which is pretty often compared to other YouTubers, then subscribe. That would be wonderful. Oh, and I'm just going to put this plug in at the end, even though I didn't even ask him if he wanted this. I just, I just like this, this guy's YouTube channel. Plus he, he's not full of crap and he knows what he's talking about. Just go check out jo uh, Curtis Joseph. Go check out Curtis Joseph, um, Curtis with a K. Um, he's got a really good occult channel. And uh, beyond that, thank you very much for watching and hope all of you have wonderful lives today, tomorrow, and through the rest of your lives. And all of you, have a good day.